Dataloop is building a system that allows our customers to build the human machine integrated pipelines. When you're working with enterprise, the list that you get with the requirements is like almost endless. We have a very, I would say, flexible infrastructure that allow you to develop your own application. Think about us like kind of an operating system. So Dataloop.ai is a company you have founded and you work for. What does it do and how does it solve some of these problems we've been talking about? From the day one, we believe that we are going towards a future where people and machine are going to work together. And that essentially, they are going to process the data together. And Dataloop is building a system that allows our customers to build the human machine integrated pipelines. That means that you can actually build a single system that contains both human and artificial intelligence. We have state-of-the-art data management systems, and we help your organization manage the amount of data and, of course, extract the insights out of it. The most basic uses of Dataloop is like taking labeling tools, labeling the data, getting the labels or the annotations, and working them and training the model. This is, I would say, like the most basic usage. More advanced customers are actually building pipelines, building a lot of automations, building their own tools. We have a very, I would say, flexible infrastructure that allow you to develop your own application. Think about us like kind of an operating system. And our customers are mainly in the supervised world. The amount of data we see in Dataloop for a month is probably what other startups are seeing in a year or two. Can you clarify like why enterprise is something special? Enterprise sales and, and enterprise service is something special. When you're working with enterprise, the list that you get with the requirements is like almost endless. So enterprise can have dozens of different data sources, right? Unlike a small business or a startup that has usually a one. But if you go to enterprise, they have network file systems and they have cloud uh, storage systems and they have databases they need to connect with. So the data complexity environment is goes way, way above. And the last one is about privacy. In many cases, they want to be on-premise behind firewalls or behind a constraints environment. And the sensitivity for the data privacy is, is very complex. And last thing, is the operation themselves. In an enterprise-like uh, uh, behavior, it's not uh, 10 people doing some kind of uh, work on the data. It's many cases, uh, thousands of people with hierarchy and groups, and some are internal to the organization and others are external to the organization. And there is relation between these groups. So it's a very complex human organization structure where each one of them has different roles and different responsibilities. So you have to manage that as well. So all the things that, uh, that are now that are very easy in like a 10 or 15 uh, uh, people company are becoming quite uh, painful once you start scaling it into hundreds and thousands of people. What's the typical demand for data, uh, data handling in a context of e-commerce and, and retail? The first one is that it's real time. It has to work 100% in real time. That means that you can think about you like going into a supermarket. You don't like the fact that you took a milk and you've been charged for a Coke. You wouldn't accept that. So your bill naturally has to be perfect. But you expect that once you go out of the supermarket, your bill will be completed. That means that people actually have to label data in real time. The other aspect of retail is the amount of classes, the complexity of the ontology. If you go to like um, Walmart or a Carrefour store, you will see half a million different products. Now, creating a classifier, AI classifier, that knows how to distinct half a million products in an, a close to even 90%, it's, it's almost unimaginable. It's the, it requires a very different behavior, very different modeling environment, etc., etc. This is the place where we actually expect AI to become superhuman. Because I don't think there is a human out there in the world that knows how to identify half a million products by themselves. These are the two interesting aspects of the retail world.